Keep watching for lots of knitting and crochet on Yarn Lane. You don't need to change channels. Pop the kettle on and meet us back here in a couple of minutes. You can also watch on the Yarn Lane YouTube channel and Facebook Live. To get a sneaky peek of the products featured on the show and shop, please go to the Yarn Lane website at www.yarnlane.com or via our UK call centre on 0800 4700 600. And remember, if you've already shopped with Sewing Street today, you won't pay any more postage and packaging for shopping with Yarn Lane because it's 1 p.m.p. across both channels all day. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the program guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. 
We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Yarn Lane. We are the only uh, shopping channel in the UK, totally and utterly dedicated to all things yarn. Today we've got gorgeous shawl, beaded shawls for you. But before we start on there, meet Anakin, I'm going to take you to the website. So uh, what you need to do is you need to go to www.yarnlane.com. It's here. It looks exactly the same as our Sewing Street one. You click on Watch the Live Show. And then there's a box to the right-hand side there where you can send a message. Oh, yes, I've opened. Oh, no, I haven't opened this. Yes, I have opened my uh, uh, YouTube, so you can message me. Right, everything from today's show is here. Now, we're not doing these straight away, but Yarn Lane loves lace blocking wires. We'll show you that later on. We've got the, the, the kitty play mat thing that you stretch on. Then, look, look, look at these. We've got the Downton Spay Bay Beaded Shawl Kit in two... Three colourways, three colourways. And then we've got Middle Earth Fistral Beaded. Beautiful in two different colours there. Beautiful. Ah, Well, that was before the holidays. Yes. <laughs> so let me take you through the bundles. Let me take you through all the bundles and then we'll set to with all the demonstrations. So I'm going to start with this one here, which I've got in two different colourways, right? So I'll start with this one here. Oh, the colours. The colours are beautiful. So what you get in your bundle here is you get your instructions. Oh, overhead instructions then you get your yarn which feels beautiful called flower this one oh 150 grams of it there it's just lovely anyway there's your yarn and then there's your beads right we'll talk all about that during the show um now it's obviously knitted it's knitted shawl but then you attach your beads oh, we'll show you how you attach your beads later Right, so that's that one. That's that one. That was the fistral beaded bloomer, early bloomer. Right, then we've got it in this lovely, be I mean, they're I don't know how you're going to decide between the colourways. Oh, look at the colours in here. Because you not only get your kind of sagey greens, your fur greens, your turquoise, but then there's lovely red flecks in there. Look, beautiful, beautiful yarn. Uh, so you get that, you get your instructions, and you get the beads. They're lovely as well, aren't they? Gorgeous. If you've never done this before, sit back, watch the instructions. Well, no, order your, order your kit, order your kit, order your kit. Let me show you this then, first of all. Oh, it's lovely. Look at this. Yeah, there you go. Other way around. Oh, yes, there's the beads. Lovely. Look how delicate. Can you see that, Jamie? Coming in closer. Beautiful, isn't it? Look. Look at the sweep of colour. That was the first colourway I showed you. Isn't it lovely? This is lovely. We'll ask all about the stitches in a second, but it's just so delicate and lovely. It's like a cobweb. Anyway, that, oh, there you go. There's the first one. That's the first one. So then the other one I've got for you, I've got three colourways in the other one for you. Um, now, this is going to be, this is, you're going to think this is confusing, right? Because you get your pattern, you get your yarn, two balls of yarn, and you get your beads. Now, don't be thinking, oh, which one do I sew first, the blue one, the green one? These are identical. These are identical. It's just the way they've been, the way they've been wound. I, I'm sure they don't do it like that. So look, so look, what's the matter? RV6650, this one. Um, it's the, so all of these colours are in there as well, but all of those colours are in there. That's right, isn't it? So they're identical. They've just been wound at a different time. Um, but look, look at all the colours. I mean, obviously, this will be the bluey, greeny one. But look. Who's this? My daughter. Oh, Beautiful. A daughter. A daughter. Right, and then the lovely silvery gate grey beads on there. 
I will sh we'll show you the uh, we'll show you the finished thing in a second. So that's that colorway. That's now is the colorway. What was the colorway in that one? Sorry. Oh, there's only four of those left. There's only four of those left. Yeah, that's the pattern, Jeremy, and the colour is Plan B. Is it called Plan B? Okay, lovely. Then I've got this one, which is 6603. This is Downton. Now, again, that ball of yarn is the same as that ball of yarn. So those beautiful colours there are all inside there, look. I know it's incredible, isn't it? Lovely. So you get your two yarns and you get your beads there. Silvery grey beads. And your pattern, obviously. Ooh, beautiful colours. And then last but not least, we've got this one here. Which the uh, ends uh, six, six, seven, eight. Again, the two balls of yarn are exactly the same. The colours are all in there. Uh, this one's called Greenhorn, plus your beads, plus your instructions. And it makes this. There it is. Oh, isn't it lovely? Now, you can't, see the be you can't see the beads on that one yet, but we'll take a, cl a closer look a bit later. Oh, go in. Let's have a look. Ooh. There they are. There they are. Beautiful. That's so, so subtle and beautiful, isn't it, that? So that one there is your spay, bay, beaded shawl. Right, let's say good afternoon to Anakin. How are you? You're looking fabulous. Thank you. It's nice to be back. Is it nice to be back? Yes. It's a long way to come though, isn't it? It is a long way, but yeah, it's worth it. Oh, good. Um, how is everybody? All good? Yes, very good, yes. Brilliant. And brand new, brand new kits. Which one yes. would you like to talk about first? Um, we'll talk about the fistral one first. Yeah, which is this one, yep. this one I've got here. That's perfect. So the fistral one is, I've just knitted a little mini sample here. Uh -huh. So it's a really tiny version of it. But it starts in the corner up here. And then you increase at the top edge here. Uh -huh. And then you do occasional decreases on the end of the wrong side row, but just occasional ones. Right. You've got a lace edging along here. And then you've got a bit of lace at the edge here as well. Right. So um, this is like the beginning and end of every row. And it's all knitted? All knitted. All knitted. Yeah. And we've got little beads along here uh -huh. so I put some grey ones on this blue yarn to make them stand out stand a bit out more a bit, yeah. so um, I'm going to show you how to do some of the stitches and then we'll also show you how to do some of the beads right so both shawls have got beads on this shawl the fistral shawl has the beads on actual stitches yeah the spay bay shawl which I've got another mini version of here oh yes which is the this the one. one behind you yeah. um, that's actually got beads just on the edging I don't know how easy it is to see. No, no, we can see those. Yeah. There are like two beads oh, on right. a triple yarn over. So there's two beads there on a really big yarn over. So do you put the beads on whilst you're knitting? Yes. Oh. So in they people used to thread the beads on before. So yeah. they would get the yarn and then sit there for like hours. Oh, threading, threading the beads, the beads on, onto the yarn. Which is a bit tedious. Yes. But you can also add them using a really uh, tiny crochet hook. Which we've got, we've got, we've so got. So the crochet hook is really, really small. You wouldn't want to crochet with it, at least I no, would. No, 70.75, that's tiny, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so it's really, really small, uh, but it makes it a lot easier to put the beads on. You can put them on as you go. Right. You don't have to count them before you start. And you don't have to like keep pulling the beads down your yarn, because if you thread them on beforehand, They're they sit on, on the yarn, yes. then you have to keep pulling them down. Oh. And that's a bit tedious. So we're gonna Okay, now I seem to remember you, don't you knit backwards or something? No, I knit continental style. Co yeah, well, they didn't mean <laughs> backwards, quite backwards. The other way round. Yeah. Yes, I knit continental style, right. So, um, but that's fine. Does it not matter? So anyone <laughs> no, who does normal doesn't matter. Normal so it doesn't matter if you knit continental style or normal, it doesn't matter. I've just realised I've... Uh, I've finished this on the wrong side. I knitted a little sample before I came. Right. So I'm just very quickly going to purl while I talk because oh, okay. I should have done one more row. So I was ready to start, but I right. didn't. Rebecca Reed. Oh, hang on, did I? Yes, I did. No, yeah. sorry. Okay, right. Let's have a look at this. Um, getting all muddled up here. There we go. Okay, so I've just knitted a little sample with the stitch pattern. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. Um, on the, so I haven't knitted in that shape. I've just done the little sample just to show some of the stitches. Right, okay. So we are, the pattern has um, 
charts, but it also has written instructions. So if you don't like the charts, you can follow the written instructions. So all the charts are on one page, and all the written instructions are on a different page. Okay, perfect. So, so whichever you can just way, follow whichever one yeah. you want. Uh, I prefer to follow charts because I find them a lot easier to fo follow, but yeah. you follow whatever you like. So um, this one has got a lot of the same stitches that I demonstrated last time I was here. So it's got uh, knit two together, SSK, and yarn over. Right. And I think that's all the stitches it has. Oh, and knit one through the back loop. So that's all the stitches. There aren't a lot of stitches to worry about. Right. So just a quick, because I showed this in quite a lot of detail last time I came on. So to do a yarn over, if you knit English style with the yarn in your right hand, yeah. to do a yarn over, you just take the yarn between the needles to the front and over. So you just go between that's the needles it. to the front. Yeah, and then you hold it there when you knit the next stitch. Right. And if you're going to purl the next stitch, then you just have to, so that's your yarn over, uh -huh. then you just have to put the yarn into the right place to purl it. Right. So you do yarn over, and then if you're going to purl, you would take the yarn to the front and then purl. Right. If you're going to knit the next stitch, hang on, how many times have I done this? <laughs> you just go around like that. Yeah. If you knit continental style with yarn in your left hand, like I do, then you just take the yarn over the right needle like that. I wonder why I wonder why they knitted differently on the continent then. I don't know. No. I don't know. It's just the way I was taught in it. Of course. So, yeah. so what before we go further, because we've had so many since you were last year, we've had so many new viewers and new buyers mm. and everything. Where does this all come from? Have you been a knitter all of your life? So I've been yeah, I've been knitting most of my life. I uh, I'm from Norway. Um, and I, my mum was knitting and I just picked it up from her when I was really young uh -huh. and I don't remember actually ever not knitting, not knitting yeah. or learning to knit. <laughs> and then I started designing and teaching workshops about probably about 15 years ago now. Yeah, when I say she had a long way to come, she hasn't come from Norway no. today. She now lives down south by the seaside, yes, a long way yes, to come up yes, from there. Yes. Um, yeah. I've got a quick question for you from Elaine. Uh, hi, John Nankin. Lovely shawls. Is the yarn wool or cotton or a blend, please, from Elaine? So the yarn for the fistral shawl, so for this the purple one, 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 this the, one, this that one. one, the yarn for the fistral shawl is wool. So that's pure merino wool. Right. Uh, very, very soft. And oh, the it's so, you very see, soft. it's yeah. really, yeah. really yeah. soft, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And the yarn for the Spay Bay shawl is uh, cotton. Oh, okay. So all natural. They're yeah, all natural. this is organic cotton as well. Oh, brilliant. So... We'll talk about that more in a second. Yeah, yeah. Now, you see, I always think of um, merino wool as being quite coarse. No, merino is the softest is wool it you the can softest get. Wool? Yeah, oh, yeah. it's just beautiful. I think I had a merino, might not have been, it was called a merino wool jump when I was younger. And I just remember it was yeah. just this the whole time. I, I think in the past, maybe, they're oh, probably yeah. better with labelling now, but I think maybe... in. I know sometimes they label stuff and it has like 10% or yeah, something. May maybe. Like cause, yeah. You see stuff labeled cashmere jumpers and you look at the label and it's got like 5% yeah, cashmere. Yeah. So. But this is, this is like, yeah. you, you could sleep on this. This yeah. is soft and beautiful soft. and really, yeah. really comfy. Yeah. Right, sorry. Okay, so yarn over, you just take the yarn between the needles to the front. Yeah. Or continental style, just over the needle like that. And then knit two together. So I'm just showing you all the stitches that you need for this shawl. Just quickly. Uh -huh. uh, yarn over, you just put your needle, sorry, knit two together, <laughs> you put your needle into two stitches and then you just knit them together. So if you do it English style, put your needle into the two stitches and you just knit them together, just like you're doing one stitch. Uh -huh. If you're going to do an SSK, that's the one that tend to cause people problems because right. a lot of people don't know what it is. No. So SSK, you slip one stitch knit wise, you put your needle in as if you're going to knit it, take it off, then you put your needle into the next stitch as if you're going to knit it and take it off. Right. And then you put your left needle into the front of those two stitches from the left. So you can see you don't go in from the right like that way. Uh -huh. The needle's pointing the same way. You go in from the left. So the needles are kind of crossed over each other with the right needle at the back. And then you just knit it from there. And what does that create? What so SSK that create? creates a left-leaning decrease. So knit two together is a right-leaning decrease. SSK is left-leaning. And um, you slip the two stitches to twist them, and then you knit them through the back loop. Right. And it just creates a really nice left-leaning line, smooth line. So that's the decreases and the yarn overs. That's what actually creates the, the fabric. Uh -huh. And then you do have to do a knit one through the back loop, which is just 
you d instead of going in through the front, you just go in through the back. Right. So that's fairly easy. And will then most people who do knitting be be well? They've heard of those before. Are they or are they something that's unusual? Knit two together. I think most people have heard of yeah. yarn over, which is also known as yarn forward. It's well, yarn I think I I, I yeah. recognise them, so we must have covered it covered yeah. it here. So we must have done yarn it. over and yarn forward is the same thing, yeah. but yarn over is probably more of an American term. But it was I learned to knit lace from American books. Oh, okay. So that's why I tend to use yarn yarn over because uh -huh. I'm more used to it, and it is more commonly used here now as well. I think, but yarn over, yarn forward, same yeah. thing. Um, main thing is that you get a loop over your needle mm -hmm. which creates a hole and then on the edging on row nine of the edging so the last right side row of the edging mm -hmm. you have to do a double yarn over which creates a bigger hole right so then you just go one hang on oh, no, there we go so you just go one yarn over mm -hmm. two yarn overs and then you carry on knitting i've got a nip of yarn in my left hand yeah. cause and then when you come back, so I'm just going to pretend I've knitted that row. When you come back, and you see here, I've got this big hole here, and I've got two strands over my needle. Right. If you try and knit those two strands as normal, it just doesn't work, because it just winds around your needle again. Yeah. So when you knit them, you have to knit one as normal, and then when you've got the other one here, so you see I've got a really big hole there. Yeah. You go through the back loop for the second one. Which obviously the pattern tells you to do. Yeah, yeah, of course. So let me just undo that. So you knit the first one as normal, the second one through the back loop. Mm -hmm. Or you could do the first one through the back loop and the second one as normal. Right. It doesn't really matter which way around you do it. You just have to do one as normal and one through the back loop. Right. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and on the Spay Bay, which we'll look at later, there is actually a triple yarn over. Right. Which is why I'm doing this one first, because okay. it progresses. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll show you how to do the beads as well. So I just knit yeah. a few stitches. So on this um, pattern, the bead is on a normal knit stitch, and it's just on the edging, so just along one side yeah, of the shawl. Yeah, you can see that here. Sorry, Jamie, if you got that. There you see the yeah. beading's just yeah. down there. Yeah. So depending on how much you want the beads to stand out, I chose the purple beads because I really like them, mm -hmm. and they go really nicely with that um, yarn. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. And I also really like it with that other colour, the gr more greener colourway. Mm -hmm. It'll probably stand out a little bit more on the green, I think. Yes. Be a bit more visible. Yeah. But it will catch the light and you will be able to see it. One thing you have to be a bit careful about with adding beads uh, is if you add loads of beads, it can make the shawl a little bit heavier. Oh, okay. So on these two shawls, there's just a few beads on the edging, yeah. on yeah. both of them. In the past, I've done shawls which have has beads all over. And I, I mean, sometimes thousands of beads. Oh. Um, and they ca you can make them slightly heavy. Will um, you use all the beads in that bag? Oh, no, no, you won't. Um, you will need, how many do you need? Uh, 140, and I think there's 500 in the bag. Oh, okay, so, you so you'll have you'll more have for another project. And will this take up all of that yarn? Yes, it will, yeah, right. yeah, it will. Okay, so to add the bead, you have the crochet hook. Yeah. And you, hang on, let me put the bead on the. So it's easier if you put the beads into like a bowl or something. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't go everywhere. Uh, and you will lose some beads on the floor. Hang on, I can't Which like a bowl. No, so uh, there we okay. go. So you just put the bead on the crochet hook. Yeah. And then I like to put my finger on it just so it doesn't slide around. Right. And then you've also got to make sure that the hook on the crochet hook points upwards. Right. So just run your fingers across it and you'll feel it. Put your finger on that bead and then you're going to take the next stitch off. So the next stitch you would be knitting, you're going to take it off with a crochet hook, mm -hmm. like that. So the bead is to the right of the stitch and the stitch is on the left. Mm -hmm. Let the stitch slide into the hook and then you grab the bead. And I like to wedge the hook in like that yeah, because then I can take those two fingers off, grab the bead and push it down. Yeah. There we go, onto, onto the, the stitch. Yarn. And you need to be fairly firm. Don't try and be gentle and just like tip it over. Yeah. Just grab the bead and push, push it down. If you try and be a 
bit more gentle and careful, you're more likely to split the yarn, then you have to take it off and start oh, again. Oh, okay. So when you've got the bead on, you put the stitch on your left needle, and then you're just going to knit it. Occasionally, some patterns you might want to need to purl it, but most patterns you would knit yeah. it. Uh, this one you would knit it. So that's how you do that. So and does it tell one. you in the pattern where to put the beads on? Yes, yeah. 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 So in the written instructions, it's got a big B. So in the chart, it's got a B. Actually, in the written instructions, it's got a B got as well. Big B. Right, okay. A capital B, so yeah. it makes it obvious. If you don't want to do the beads, you can just knit that stitch instead. Right. Okay, so. What's the point? You need to have your beads on a bead. You need to have sure. the bead, yes, exactly. So um, put the bead on, crochet yeah. hook. Make sure the hook is pointing upwards. Take the stitch off with the crochet hook. Mm hmm let this stitch slide into the hook and you can pull the stitch so it's a bit taut oh. you don't have to worry about don't worry about the stitch becoming bigger uh -huh. and stretching it because it'll pop back when you put it back on the needle it just makes it easier to put the bead on yeah wedge your hook in like that grab the bead and push it on and then put the stitch back and then knit it some people hang on if i can get it on some people hold their knitting needles like that yeah. and some people hold the hooks like that right and i found when i've been teaching this because i've been teaching this for probably about 10 years now uh -huh. um if you hold it like that you have a lot less control and it's a lot more difficult because you're then trying to like poke the, the yes, bead yeah. like that whereas if you hold your hand on top it is a lot easier and you yeah. have a lot more control especially but don't if you use it like you're doing your crocheting it's a different technique yeah yeah well i actually crochet with my hand like that as well okay. so. I also hold my needles like that, so okay, that's fine. probably why. So that's how you put the beads on um, if it's just a knit stitch. Well, I thought you put them on, you must put them on afterwards, after you'd finished no, the tour. No, I you, no you put them on. So what they actually do is they sit on the stitch. I don't know whether you can yeah. see it. But that means you can actually see it from the right side and the wrong side. Oh, yes. So it actually sits around the stitch. If you thread the beads on before you start knitting, so if you uh, thread on the yarn before you start knitting, you actually it actually sits in front of the stitch. So you slip the stitch and then you pull the bead in front of it. So it sits in front of the right. stitch, which means that for something lacy that's going to get stretched, it slides around a bit. Uh, right. Now these fit, they kind of almost just fit into where yeah. they're supposed to be. But this they? one it kind of sits on the stitch. It sits around the stitch, yeah. which is a lot better. So on opinion. on here we've got the we've got the the regular stitch that takes up the whole you know the main body yeah. of the of the shawl mm. then we've got this i think this is lovely these i mean i know you've just shown us the stitch yeah. but they look like those circles look so pronounced in that yeah bit, yeah so they? that's the so you start i didn't actually do it on this bit but you start at the beginning with just garter stitch uh -huh. and the lace on the edging right and then as you go on further down the shawl you have a lace panel in the middle as well oh the, that's yeah that's yeah, not which on, is that on one. here so yeah. what you've done is you've done on that one there you've got in front of you, you've got the hem then you've got the two lines of scallops yeah with the beading in the yeah. middle yeah and then and then you've done this yeah beyond it we haven't got yeah. to that bit no there. no so that bit i just didn't knit this very big um but on that one you have a bit of lace yeah a bit further down and then you've got a bit of garter stitch again before you get to the edging it's just. I, I think love when it. I was designing it, I got to the point where I was like getting a little bit bored, so I added a bit of lace. Oh, I see. So it, the original design was going to be all. all well, that's what I was thinking, yeah. and then I kind of got a bit bored, and I thought, no, let's add a bit of lace. Okay, that's beautiful. Now, before I go on to the next design, let me just take you through the two bundles I've got this because they're very, very popular. The one to make this, if you want to make this one. <clears throat> I tell you that again, Cam. Okay, this is the most popular. <coughs> excuse me so you get the ball of yarn it's merino wool you can hand wash it don't iron it <coughs> um hang on i can't read any of the things it's called flower then you get the beads and then you also get the uh, pattern so on the pattern it's both chart and so there's your written instructions so there's your written instructions there's your chart with the with the, with the um, thing at the bottom, key at the bottom. You will need so you, you knit those together. On what size needles? Uh, what size? Uh, four millimeter needles. Four millimeter needles. If you haven't got one of those, I've got one here, but I'm sure you've all got one. Now, and do I you always 
knit on, on ones on a wire? Yes. Do you have to knit this on a wire? So you don't have to knit that one on a circular needle, but you will end up with quite a lot of stitches at the end. Right. So I do recommend it because it will struggle to fit. So you'll end up with 215 stitches at the end. Oh. So you will struggle to fit that on a straight needle. Yeah. It will keep falling off. Yeah. So I do recommend circular needles. Circular needles are great. Um, you knit them, you don't knit in the round, you just knit back and forth. So yeah. you just forget the fact that they're attached and you just use the It's really a, stor tips. a storage yeah. space for yeah. them. So you're not thinking, it, I'm going round no. and round and round. And the thing I like most about circular needles is that if you get any pain in your shoulders or your elbows, because it's kind of held, the weight is kind of held on the cable, you yeah. can kind of put it in your lap and it gets bigger. And you haven't got that weight hanging on one side oh, or the other. Okay. It's all central in the middle and more evenly. So it's much better for your shoulders and your elbows and hands. And there you go. You so see. if you get any pain, try circular needles. And if you're a bit unsure to start with, just knit on a little square and practice a few rows. Yeah. But if but you just think of them as like two separate needles. Yes, it's getting over the yeah. fact that they're not going to be yeah. on the stick there. They're going to yeah. be going yeah. on the round. And yeah. also because they are attached, you're not going to lose one. No. No, exactly. So that's those. But you also need one of these, which is a 0 0.75 millimeter. The tiniest hook we've ever seen. So uh, what are these for? What, who, who would crochet that small? I don't know. I well, guess if you have really, 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 really fine thread. My I mean, like like my literally a, 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 like, like an embroidery thread or probably, something. Probably, like yeah. That. I mean, my grandmother used to do really, really, really fine crochet and she probably used tiny hooks. Did but your I grandma can't. do hard anger or anything like that for her eight? No, 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 no. I don't think so, anyway. Right. Anyway, one ninety nine crochet hook. It's by, it's by um, Knit Pro. You know, we, we have all our, our other sizes in there with Knit Pro, but for this you need the 0 0.75 one. So that's the blue one. And then the green one, which isn't made up here, but the colourway is extraordinarily beautiful. I love this colourway. So you get the yarn. Then you get the this is the, then you get the uh, purple beads, and you get the instructions. Same instructions. I love the way your daughter faces this way, but you face that way. I know. <laughs> uh, Twenty nine ninety nine. So you will use all of that yarn. You won't. You only use a quarter of those beads, really. Uh, and then you've got your instructions forever. Then, well, actually, you've then got enough beads to do another one, and another one, haven't you? Afterwards. Beautiful, twenty nine ninety nine. That one's called uh, Middle Earth. Right now we're going to move on to the one that's behind you, yep. which is just a, they're both adorable, aren't they? Let me quickly go through the colourways with you again. The one that's behind you is this one. Yep. So now, if you've just tuned in, these two balls of cotton are the same. It's just they've just been wound at different stages of their variegated dipping and dyeing. You get the silver beads and you get the instructions for twenty nine ninety nine. Again, you'll need size four knitting needles, yeah. or four millimeter needles, and you'll need the little uh, crochet hook as well. And that makes that that one that you just saw on the stand. Then that's one colourway. It's beautiful, that's, isn't it? That's the one that the sample is. That's the there. sample one there. You see, because I can't, it's weird, isn't it? On this one, you can't see any kind of the yellow, goldy Probably tone. Probably hidden in the middle. Do I, I yeah, I don't want to start delving in. Then there's this one here, which ends uh, 6650. Same thing again. You get your two balls of cotton. Again, lovely colours. They are the same. When you unravel that one, you'll see that colour. When you unravel that one, you'll see that colour. You get your silver beads. This is called Plan B, this one. And then there's your instructions again. It's lovely, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. I wonder what other colours are inside there. Because that one had yellow hiding in it, didn't it? See, they are definitely all greens and blues in that one, aren't they? It's going to look like the ocean, I think, that one. Beautiful. And then, last but not least, now this is the one that <laughs> threw me completely. Again, the two balls are the same cotton yarn. They look so different. Rebecca kept saying to me, these are the same, John, these are the same. And I'm like, what's she seeing? What is she seeing? They're nowhere near the same. But look at all the colours in there. 
Now, do you just start at the end and whatever yeah. colour happens, yeah. happens? You yeah. don't unravel it and think, I want to start with the green. No, no. You just go for it. I mean, you don't want to cut the yarn because you will need most of it. So right. I normally allow like a 10% safety margin uh -huh. because not everyone knits to the exact correct tension. No. So, but yeah, I just start at the, some people like to start from the middle. I start I'll from like the outside. Pull it out like yeah. that, yeah. I just get in a tangle when I do that, so I just start from the outside. But you just, you, you, there's no re-balling <coughs> re it. You literally no. just start wherever you start. So yeah. you're either going to start with an, or, so where do you start? In the far, the back So corner? you start at the top, oh, so in the centre top, which Okay, is so you decide whether you want the orange or the pale green at the centre yeah, top, and yeah. then just go. And the, yeah, and you will get through all the colours. Because the colours are so kind of random, the way they're wound. Yeah. Trying to, because you will use, the rows of the start are much shorter and then they get longer towards the end. S but because, so you could say if you wanted a colour to stand out more, you could start with it because you get, um, like a, because the sh rows are shorter, you get a longest, more rows. Oh, okay. Than That's you do at the end because yeah. the rows are so much longer. So but go. because there's so many colours in them, it's just to just start. Oh yeah, just go for it. And, and also it's not it. gonna, you're not gonna, it doesn't matter if you get half, at the end of here, if it's an orange one and you start on a no, green one, no, that doesn't no, matter, no. does it? I, d I mean, when you're wearing it, nobody's going to see it anyway. <coughs> no, exactly. And also, they're just so colourful and fun and just go for it. They are beautiful. Is it called Downton after Downton Abbey? No, that's the colourway. Oh, that's the someone The shawl's called, called Spay Bay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Right. So, where do we start on this Okay. One? So this one, so I've got a little mini version here, just to show the shape. So uh -huh. when you actually finish it, uh -huh. it looks a little bit funny because it's got, it curves around quite a lot. Uh -huh. But when you wear it, you don't see that. The ends kind of like twirl it's a around. It's waterfall, yeah. They just kind of twirl the around. The colourway you're using isn't one of our colourways. No, I just had to use the ones I had. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> just so you're not thinking, I wonder <laughs> yeah. which ball that comes out. No, so sorry, I, I yeah. didn't have any of those colourways, unfortunately, so yeah. I just had to use what I had. Yeah. Uh, but it is the same yarn, and it is pure cotton, and it's incredibly soft. I must admit, I'm not normally a huge fan of cotton oh, okay. in the past. So when I first tried this yarn, I was a little bit unsure about it. But when I got it, I ordered it. And when I got it, I absolutely loved it. And that oh, was wow. the first design I knitted with it. Oh, brilliant. And um, it's called Spay Bay because I knitted it on a holiday in Scotland uh -huh. in the Spay Bay area. Uh, so so <laughs> holiday, holiday, holiday. I like holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it's you start here at the top. Right. With just three stitches, and then you're increasing on every right side row. So you're increasing three stitches at the beginning and three stitches at the end right. of every right side row. Uh, so you are increasing quite rapidly, and you do end up with quite a lot of stitches at the end. Right. Um, and you do have to do a stretchy cast off, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh -huh. Uh, just to make sure, you want to make sure this edge is elastic. Right. And that's the same with the fistral shawl, and most shawls, to be quite honest. Um, but this one has a um, double, a triple yarn over at the edge. Right. With two beads. Right. I don't know if oh. you can see that. Oh, there you go. You see that? Yeah. So you get like a big hole with two yarn overs in the middle. Right. And it just makes the edging hang quite nicely when you're wearing it. So. It has all the same stitches as Spay Bay, uh, as Fistral. Uh, the only difference is it has a decrease called SK2PO. Right. And that decreases from, I'm just going to knit a few stitches. So SK2PO is a double decrease. So it decreases from three stitches down to two. So S is for slip. So you slip mm -hmm. it knitwise. So you put your needle in as if you're going to knit and take it off. And then you knit the next two together. So that's the K, knit two together. And then you've got that slip stitch here. You lift that slip stitch over, which is the PO, pass over. Okay. So you end up with a, um, you go from three stitches down to one. Yeah. Um, what you've got to be a bit careful about is if you've got a yarn over in front of it, which you do. So you do a yarn over, whether you do it English or uh, continental, doesn't matter. Slip on knitwise, knit two together. And when you come to pass the slip stitch over, you've got the slip stitch there, which is pink. And then I've got the um, yarn over here, which is slightly darker. Uh -huh. You've just got to make sure you lift the right stitch over. Right. And you don't accidentally grab the yarn over and pull it over. So when you first do it, just look at it and make sure you lift the slip stitch over. When you're actually doing it on the needles, it's easier to see. 
So you end up with like a hole in front of it, like uh -huh. here, the yarn over, and then the um, SK2PO, and then normally you would do a yarn over afterwards yeah. as well. Does it feel different the one you slip over? Is it looser or anything like that? Will you be able to feel as you're pulling on the yeah, right it's, one? Yeah, well, it's, it's because the yarn doesn't go through, the working yarn doesn't go through it. Yeah because you haven't knitted it. So you can see the working yarn is coming from the last stitch I knitted. Mm -hmm. So it's just, if you look on the back, you'll see you that the working yarn doesn't one, go yeah, through it. Yeah. Um, right, so the other thing that this one has is a triple yarn over. So on um, chart A, it has a triple yarn over, and then on the final chart, the edging, has a triple yarn over with a bead. Right. So let's do the normal triple yarn over first. I'll do it English style first. So. Yarn over one, mm -hmm. between the needles two, three. So you just wrap it around the needle three times. So one, two, three. So the same as if you're doing one, you're just doing it three times. So continental style one, two, three. And if you accidentally only do it twice, you it doesn't matter, you can actually fix it on the next row. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to knit a couple of stitches and then we'll turn around and knit back again. Hang on. Okay, so there's my triple yarn over. So you can see I've got the yarn band around the needle three times. So this one, because we've got three, every other one has to be knitted through the back loop. And I actually decided on this one to do knit one through the back loop, knit one, knit one through the back loop which your pattern tells you to do. Problem is trying to get in through the back loop for the first one because it's wound around the needle can be a little bit difficult. So if you're struggling to get in through the back and you can't get your needle in, what I do is I go in pearl-wise into the front of that stitch mm -hmm. and then I just slide it over my needle to the back. Okay. So that now it's through the back loop. And I knit that one, and then I knit the next one as normal, and then I knit the last one through the back loop. Now, one thing that can sometimes happen as you, so I've knitted the first one through the back loop, as I knit the second one, I pull a little bit too hard and the remaining two loops fall off. Right. And I should still have one loop because I've got to do the last yarn over. So if that happens, just put your needle in so it's over your mm -hmm. needle and then you can just knit the last oh, one. Okay. Or if you get to it and you realise you've only done two yarn overs, so you've only got two loops there, just take your needle and go under, and there you go three. Okay. So you can kind of cheat. Mm -hmm. And then on the edging, you're going to do a bead. If I can just catch one of these little tiny beads, there we go. One of these beads, so bead on the hook. Uh -huh. Make sure the hook's pointing upwards, put your finger on the bead, hand on top, and then you're going to, um, We've done three yarn overs, which means we've basically created three stitches. But this is especially obvious if you look on the chart. So, let's see if I can get this down here. Yeah. So if you look on the chart, on chart A, we've got three circles here. Mm -hmm. And then you can see they're each in a little square. So we've got three circles in e you know, one circle in one square, one in another square, one in another square. Mm -hmm. Because they create three stitches. On the edging, down here, we got a circle in one square with a number three in the middle. And it's the same as up here, it's the same three yarn overs, but I only wanted to take a one stitch. Right. So when we've done the next row, it's only going to be one stitch. So don't worry if that sounds confusing. Uh -huh. but no, I understand that. You I think that. of that, those three yarn overs as one stitch. Yeah. And then on the next row, instead of knitting those three yarn overs like we did just now, we're going to take the bead, lift the loop off, and you just lift the loop off and let all three loops pull off. So you've got one really long loop. Uh -huh. let, um, let the yarn slide into the hook. Grab the bead, push it down, put it back on the needle. And you've got to be a bit careful because it's quite big. Right. And then you knit it. So you do three yarn overs. Actually, I've just realized. You only put one bead I've only on. I've only put one on. Right, let's do that again. <coughs> put two on that one. Uh, let me just. So what I do is, I actually put two on my hook at the same time. Right. So can you see yeah. I got two on there? Mm -hmm. And then let it slide into the hook. So I grab both beads at the same time. It's easier to do them both at the same time. So just grab them both, push them down, 
put the stitch back on your left hand needle and then you just knit it. So you did, even though you did three yarn overs, which would normally create three different stitches, by the time you've done row, the next row, row 12, it's just one stitch again. Nice. And it doesn't look very nice there, but once you've blocked it, you'll see it'll kind of sit in the middle of a slightly big hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these bits that are pulled out here, that's the bead. So when you block it, which we'll talk about in a minute, yep. you know which point you're going to pull out because it's where you got the two yarn overs. Because sometimes you look at it edging and you're quite not quite sure where you're supposed to pull it mm -hmm. to stretch it, but you can see that because it's where the two yarn overs are. Are there any other stitches in there that we need to be aware of? Um, <coughs> no, I don't, no, I don't think so. Okay. All the same as the other ones. Could you do me a favour, take that one off the stand yeah. and let you know how I laid this one out on the stand yeah. so we can see the formation of the stitches and things. So let me just slide all this over. So this one is knitted in garter stitch, so both sides are the same. Right. And it is huge. And again, you use all, all two balls of yeah, yarn yeah. or cotton. You'll have a little bit of a safety margin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then do you use, again, only a, a percentage of the beads again? You use just over half the beads. Right. Okay, so if you can see there, so you start in the centre of that there, uh, right in the middle there, and you work your way out. So you start here. Yep. So the start point, you're just doing garter stitch, so you're uh -huh. knitting right and wrong side rows while you get used to the shaping. Cause so if that's the, that's the beginning of the row, uh -huh. you do knit, slip on, knit one yarn over, knit one yarn over, knit one yarn over. So you do three yarn overs. Then you knit to the last four stitches, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit two. Yeah. I think that's right. It's um, in the pattern anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't have to remember that. And then you do chart A and chart B. Oh, I see. And then you do a bit more garter stitch uh -huh. and you do chart A. That's that big treble yarn over. Yeah. That we just did. But no beads until we get to right to the outside yeah. then. Yeah, and then chart, chart A and chart B. So each one of these two is chart A and chart B. Uh -huh. And then a bit more garter stitch. And then chart C, uh -huh. which is this bit. And then the edging, right, which is chart D. But yeah, written instructions as well. So on chart B, you've got some beads on the sides here. And then you've got this double bead in the middle. Brilliant. Lovely. Right. And let me just go through those three different colorways again. Then we'll talk about blocking. So the, that one there is this one. Most popular at the moment. So you get your two balls of cotton yarn. You get your beads and you get your instructions. $29.99. Nice. Again, these are the same balls. They've just been wound from different places. They will make the one you've just seen. Then I've got the one that I called, looks like an ocean, which finishes uh, 6650. This is lovely. I think this is my favourite, this one. So you get the blues and the greens in there. Love all these bluey tones here. Plus the silver beads, plus the instructions. $29.99. Plan B. Story of my life. And then uh, we've got this one here, which has got the orange in it, but it's got so many other tones in there as well. Look, I'd love to see that one made up, because look at all the colour. It's kind of reminds me of like rocks and formations of rock and things like that. It's lovely. Beautiful, beautiful colours there. Plus your beads, plus your instructions. $29.99. Now, um, we were just talking about blocking. Mm. We've got to yarn lane loves, right? So you know these, you recognise these, because we've had these before. These are, well, they're called legs blocking mats, but I know them as when you've got a child and you've got a playroom and you want to make a mat for the playroom. They're exactly the same things, right? So those are $23.99. You get nine mats in there. One, two. Oh, yeah, take them oh yeah, you take them. I was going to say there's one missing. You've taken one. Yeah. So there's nine mats in there. They're each 12 inches. So it's um, 36 by 36 inch square is what you can make. So if you're doing a big short, you're going to need a big space, aren't you? Now, we normally uh, sell, when we sell those, we normally sell the rainbow pin pins at the same time, don't we? But today, I've got this. So this is called a lace blocking wire net. 
You can see there. And inside, you get stainless steel wires, six at 37 and a half inches, six at 19 and a half inches, three flexible, flexible wires of 37 and a half. You get 20 T-pins and you get a measuring tape. So there's your measuring tape. There's your T-pins, which I have to uh, go like that with. And then inside here, oh, oh here you go, it's this end. Right, please be careful when you open this, right? You get all of these. Now, they're not all here at the moment because Anakin's got a couple of them. But you get these, like, springy wires. Some are, some are fle more flexible than others. And you kind of think, okay, what do I do with all this? Well, Anakin's going to show you. How much is it? Nine, oh, £19.59. There you get, you get the um, 16 wires, the 20 T-pins, the tape measure, and they all come in that really good storage um, tube that they're going to be. I'd like to see them push that through your letterbox. Anyway, what, how, do, how on earth do we use these? So, first I want to say these are not just for lace knitting, all okay. types of knitting. And also, they're not just for knitting, they're really good for crochet as well. Perfect. So whenever you, for lace knitting, we want to stretch it. But for normal knitting, so say you've done like a ferrule sweater or cable sweater, everything, all knitting, and I expect the same is true for crochet, yep. it benefits from being blocked. Blocking is just kind of just smoothing it out and making it all relax. So even if you're doing, say, a ferrule sweater, it would be really good to have these... Um, blocking kits right and I have this kit at home oh um, good you also so you can use these squares to make whatever shape you want uh -huh. um, I'm going to do this on the diagonal so I only need to use one so I've done the um, wire through there then I'm going to take you through here so I'm using just the short wires because this is just a small swatch so on the edge here I've got like um, yarn overs which creates holes so what I'm doing is I'm just going under two strands over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. I do actually have loads of videos on my website of me blocking various oh, okay, types of perfect, shawls. Yeah. And what's your um, website called? Jan Addict UK. Jan Addict. Or if you just Google my name, because it's an unusual name. Yeah, not many <laughs> Okay, people. so um, once you've done that, you don't want to use the pins. Uh -huh. And um, you may need more, probably, better to get another pack of the pins. I think you sell those separately as well. Oh, do we? Um, I think. Uh, uh, Rebecca Reed will know. I'll find yeah. out for you. Um, so you just put, so instead of putting the pins really, so if you're on a straight edge, normally you would have to put the pins really close together. Well, you yeah, need because like I've seen people block hundreds it. It goes, it goes like this yeah. where you pull it So through, if you yeah. want a straight edge, you obviously don't want that. So no. if you want a straight edge, uh, instead of putting like pins close and close together, you yeah. can just put them like a couple along there. And then, hang on, let's get some more out. And then we'll do the same thing here. So uh -huh. we'll just stretch it a bit and then put a couple along there. Hang on, try not to drop that on the floor. And then these I'm going to pull out. So this is where my double, because this is fistral, so that's where my double yarn over was. It's uh -huh. a slightly bigger hole. I pull those out to create that kind of scalloped edging. Uh -huh. Oops. And I always get my bracelets caught in this. Oh, no. <laughs> and then I can stretch it. So before I do this with lace, I actually soak the shawl in lukewarm water right. uh, for about 10 minutes. Right. Um, take it out, squeeze out the water. Don't wring it or anything. Just squeeze it out gently. Uh -huh. Put in a big towel on your kitchen worktop or something. Roll it up into a sausage. Squeeze out as much water as you can. Then you do this on the floor, dining room table, double bed, wherever. Yeah. And then you leave it to dry. What's the difference then between the w just the straightforward wires that you've got there and then the three flexible wires? Yes, yeah, so the flexible, flexible ones are a little bit more bendy. So, for example, on this one, it's, there's a curved edge. Oh, I see. So it just needs so you can go through the curved edge. Oh, I see. Yes. My you kid don't want that to be straight, yeah. yeah. My kit is a little bit older and my wires aren't as flexible because these are a bit more flexible than the old uh -huh. wires. My kit is a few years old now. So it means you can go through here and then these points, you want to pull them out. And that's where this is spray base, is where you've got the double Bs. You yeah. pull those out and put a pin in it. So when you stretch it, is that with lace shawls, I stretch it as much as I can so that if this was suspended, 
you could like bounce the ball off it. Oh, crikey. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. No, 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 you no probably but you're saying really stretch it. Yeah, Don't so if you stretch it, it yeah. and you think you've stretched it enough, stretch it, stretch it a bit more. Yeah. Whenever I've done this blocking tutorials in person, in workshops and things, everyone's been surprised at how much I stretch it. Well, you after you spent all that time doing that lovely, delicate work, the last thing you want to do is then pull but it. Cause that's what makes it look beautiful. Yeah. But that show behind you, that was been hanging in my office for a few months and it wasn't looking that beautiful on Saturday. Oh, okay. And, and then on Sunday I did this and it just transforms it. And how long do you leave it for? So you till wet it, dry. it, you towel dry it, yeah. you put it like that, 24 hours? Till it's dry. Oh, just till so it's dry. So it depends on how hot it is. <laughs> so in the winter a bit longer. Yeah. You yeah. haven't got the heat coming. Yeah. I've got a quick message for you. Uh, I've knitted several of Anakin's shawls in the past and they are always well written and very easy to follow from Jane. Thank yeah, you, Jane. Thank That's you. what we need to hear. Right, so these are £19.59. pence. I think you need these. I and think if you do a lot of blocking, I think you definitely need these. And you can use them for sweaters and other things yeah. as well, crochet. Well, anything. they're long, they're long as well, aren't they? Yeah, so yeah. If, <coughs> you can either use one a shorter thing or, like yeah. I say, a jumper. So if I've got a shawl where there's like a really long edge, I'll use two or two of the long ones. Okay. Along the whole Yeah, yeah, edge. yeah, and just hold, hold it yeah. all out like that. Uh, somebody just asked about this one here. I'll tell you what this one is now. This one here, I've got time. Oh, yeah, this one here is this one. It's called Early Bloomer Fistral. Beautiful, beautiful colours. Look at that. This is merino wool, and I cannot tell you how soft it is. Plus, you get the beads, plus, you get the instructions. You'll need size four millimetre knitting needles, which are on the floor. And you need your baby, baby crochet hook to the 0.75 crochet hook. They're, up, they're underneath the. Um, underneath us on the thing and then the other colorway in here which i'd love to see this one made up as well beautiful beautiful colors in this they're just stunning aren't they? at 29.99 29.99 how beautiful is that you don't knit yourself get your friend to do it for you because i think they're just beautiful to have or oh, christmas gifts imagine that if you went if you've got the skill of being able to knit and then do those little crochet beads on there. Imagine how your friends are going to feel if you gave them one of those for a Christmas present. Not, I mean, made up. Make it up for them. Be no good giving this to me as a Christmas present. We're like, yeah, it's lovely colours. What to do with it? £29.99. Anakin, thank you so much. Thank it's been you. lovely to see you. No doubt I'll see you next time after another holiday. Yes. Oh, no, I'll have had my <laughs> holiday by then. <clears throat> now, Yarn Lane is back on Friday. No guest, just me doing a kit roundup. And who? Oh yeah, keep, come keep me company. I thought you said I had Haley on with me there. I was like, what? On a Friday? No, they don't work for. They work from home on Fridays. Uh, anyway, thank you very much indeed for joining me today. Uh, have uh, I'm off tomorrow? I'm not in tomorrow. I'll be back on Sewing Street on Friday, 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 Friday. Uh, so check out your baskets. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. 
Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again.